Well, good morning, Journey family. How are we doing? So can y'all do me a favor and help me welcome uh, my family back home. Three Life Church is watching with us right now. So it was so important that they be a part of it that we let them go to church in their pajamas today. Okay. And so um, they may be having mimosas right now. Uh, watch and serve. Pray for them. Pray for them. Got a lot of work to do. I love you. <laughs> Uh, and I know that my, my little loveys, Violet and uh, Shiloh, are, are watching right now. And my princess, the queen of the house, AK, is watching from home right now. And I love y'all. Uh, I, I got my son uh, with me. And, and Kyler, he's been my ride or die this weekend. We've had so much fun. And, and he's almost taller than me. But I'm okay. Did your team win yesterday? Who did Georgia play? Do you know? Who was it? Anyways. How many of you love to wait? <laughs> you love it? How many of you love to wait? You know, we, we sing about it, but it absolutely sucks to wait. I hate it. I don't even want to wait in the drive-thru. Here's the thing, okay? I'll be at Chick-fil-A, and I know they're fast, okay? <laughs> but I can even get frustrated. With, I don't want to wait. David said, I waited patiently for the Lord. He said, he inclined unto me. He heard my cry. But don't skip that I waited patiently for the Lord. My wife was in Italy a couple of weeks ago, and I had all the nuggets, okay? I had all the kids. And the littlest one, one years old, okay, was uh, I'm waiting on the bottle to warm up, okay? She's waiting on the bottle, and her patience wore out way faster than, my, than mine, okay? And she just started going, bah, bah, just started screaming. And you laugh, but you do the same thing. You're waiting on God, and you'll start complaining towards your wife, towards your husband, towards your, your partner, whoever it is. And every now and then, we just let out a bah. You ever let out a bah in Jesus' name? Like, you're not trying to. I'm trying to be patient. And that's what I want to talk to you today, and, and, and I, want to, I want to share something from my heart. And, and to be honest with you, I, I, I don't want to share this. I, I didn't want to share what I'm going to share with you today. Okay, uh, I want to share like a revival message. Okay, I did, because I had to. I've had to live this one the past couple of years. I don't like that. Okay, I want to come in here and encourage you. Throw this microphone, jump on top of this, get in the pool, and let's go home. We'll get. We we'll eat on the way home. Uh, but but this one's been tough. It's been a tough past couple of years waiting on God and 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 uh, and I want to talk to you about uh, what I've learned over the past couple of years. I didn't read it in a book. I had to learn it in those dark hours. I had to learn it, and, and if you're a man in here, if you've got a broken heart, you're going to run for things that are going to bring comfort. Every man that is in here, every woman that's in here that's ever truly been broken uh, by God, Hebrews chapter 12 says it like this, who I love, I correct. Uh, now, now, I grew up, you chastised, okay? How many of you grew up where your parents would spank you? Raise your hand. I know that is so unwoke, okay? Okay. Um, but I grew up where anybody could spank you, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm like, do you even know my family? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, we're, we're in Subway. Like, <laughs> what are we doing here, okay? I was just trying to order, and I'm getting beat while I'm trying to order. But the Bible says this, who the Lord loves, he corrects. And I read that so wrong for so many different times, but who the Lord loves, he disciplines. He begins to crush because he says, you're my child. And I'm not going to allow you to go in a direction that, that, that is going to ultimately kill you. And sometimes we pray for things. We believe for things that aren't the best for us, and God knows. But he uses the crushing of life to get our attention. And if God disciplines you, I want you to dance. I want you, why would I do that? Because that means you're a child of God. If he leaves you alone, you need to worry. But if he disciplines you, go, oh, that means God loves me. Quit worrying about it. And understand that he's taking you in the right direction. David said in Psalms chapter 27, I'm going to be talking about a guy by the name of Elijah today. 
I'm going to be talking about a spirit that was on Jezebel that is attacking the church of today. I want to talk to you to break some strongholds, to break some generational habits. Some people call curses. I want to break those in Jesus' name. But I don't understand those until I walk through it. I wish somebody would have told me that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. I wish it would have hit my heart sooner and not my head because I could quote it before I really understood it. And David went through hell. He said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Why did he say he's my light? Because he had been in the dark, dark, dark places. Maybe you've been in the dark places of discouragement and depression and loneliness inside a room filled with people, yet you feel like nobody understands you, nobody sees you, and nobody is watching you. I want to talk to those that are under spiritual attack today, and you could care less. (laughs) And you've reached a numb place. He said, wait patiently for the Lord. Psalms 27, verse 14, wait patiently for the Lord. Then he says this, look at my face. This is weird. He goes, be brave. So he goes, wait patiently for the Lord. Then he says, be brave. Oh, oh, and be patient uh, or, and be courageous, okay? Then he says it again. Has your parents had to repeat their self ever? Your, your parents. Uh, parents, have you ever had to repeat yourself? You know it's real when God starts repeating himself, right? So he said, be patient, be brave, be courageous, be patient. So in the patience, you're, men, can I talk to you for a second? You're going to have to be brave enough, women, to set some boundaries in your life. You have to be courageous enough to walk away from that thing that God is calling you to walk away from and courageous enough to step into a new calling. You're going to have to be courageous enough to step out of the cave, be vulnerable and honest. And you'll stay there if you sit there and lie about the place that you're in. And you're only as sick as your secrets. And it's not until the, God crushes you. He, he crushes you because he loves you. And there's oil inside of you that is going to help so many people. And over the last two years, God has been crushing my spirit, crushing the ego and crushing the pride and crushing I can do it on my own and crush me. I just want to stay in the cave. Now we talk about Elijah coming out of the cave, but we don't talk about like like me. Like me, it's like oh, he got touched. He was delivered. Go go touch uh, ha- anoint Hazel and, and Jehu and Elisha, all the things. And, and then he went on his merry way. But we don't talk about the moments we go back in the cave. Like when God got us out, we were saved, I'm set apart, and then I'm going back into the thing that God delivered me from. But there's a spirit that's attacking the church, and I want to talk to you about it. I guess I could give you an illustration, um, and, and, and we got just a couple minutes left. But uh, illustration, I was at the beach, and I, saw, I, I was thinking about the beach. And I was thinking about all of you, you that surf. And it's freezing. Don't know why you do it now. That's ridiculous, okay? And there's sharks. Did you know there's sharks? Ridiculous. Like a lot of them, okay? And they can bite your leg off. And you bleed out in the water. Nobody will ever know it. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's dangerous, just for this little ride. It's like, woo, okay, awesome. That was great. And I'm sure it's fun. I'm sure it's fun. But, but they do it. And, and they know the wave isn't going to last forever, but they ride it anyways. And they know there's sharks in the water, but they ride it anyways. And in the Christian life, there's going to be ups and downs and highs and lows. You're going to fall off the board of life. You're going to have to deal with sharks in your own family. Somebody say amen. But if you understand what a surfer understands, the risk is worth the reward. This Christian life, there's always going to be an attack. He is as a roaring lion. But I got to know that if I fall off the wave of worship, I can get back on another one. And I can ride the wave every single day time. Hey, you may fall off the board. Get back on and keep on paddling. Wait on the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Brave enough to set boundaries. Courageous enough to step into your calling. Now, with that being said, I want to open up what God taught me over the last couple of years. You you heard the story about this guy by the name of David, right? That he attacked and, and killed a lion and a bear. Okay, and I know your your bar story story is cool. You like fought two dudes, and that's great. And you won. That was awesome. That was your side of it, and 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 I'm sure it was absolutely amazing, right? And 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 but he fought a lion, and a, the, a dude by the name of Travis uh, fought. I saw this article. 
He he killed a lion like a couple of years ago. Look it up. I was like, you did what? Coolest story ever. Uh, so don't just think that this just happens in Scripture. But but he but he he fought a lion and a bear. You, and that's why I came to tell you. That's why I came because we can see that in the flesh and think I've got to fight in the flesh. It's not about the flesh. It's in the spirit that God gave him the ability to do this. In the spirit, we read the scripture. So what does that mean? Brave enough to set boundaries. Courageous enough to step into your calling. What does it mean that he had to fight a lion and a bear before he ever got promoted? to his Goliath is you have to fight the lies of the lion that I'm not good enough. You have to fight the lies of the lion that I'll never recover. You have to fight the lies of the lion that God doesn't have a calling for me. It is a lie from Satan himself and he is as a roaring lion. He is a liar and he will defeat you. You have to you have to make it through the burden of the bear. You have to break the backbone of the bear. It's the backbone, the bear of bitterness and the bear of, 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 of anger and resentment. And and once you pass these tests, you know what you're passing? What you're passing is simply this, Hebrews chapter 12. Get rid of the sin that so easily trips us up. In Troop County terms, it's get the junk out the trunk. (laughs) No secret sin. Because it's hard to run for God holding on to fleshly sins, to secret sins. I'll never be truly set apart until I come to God in humility and say, this has been holding me back, and I give it to you. That's worship. The devil doesn't care if you come in here and worship God. He really doesn't. It's like he, he don't care if you sing as long as you don't surrender. He don't care if you run in here as long as you don't repent. He don't care if you're entertained as long as it doesn't touch your soul and your heart and your spirit. As long as there's no change, he's fine. (laughs) You can cry in a service, but as long as you don't change, the devil won't attack you. But as soon as you step up to the lion, as soon as you step up to the bear, there's going to be an attack. Revelation chapter 2 said, I've got a problem against you, church, because you tolerate the spirit of Jezebel, idolatry and and immorality. And he said, I've got a problem because this Jezebel spirit will not repent. That was the problem. It's not that we run. It's the fact that this spirit gets a hold of your heart and there's no repentance. He said, remove yourself from such person. Then we see this Jezebel in, 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 in um, 1 Kings chapter 19. And by way of just setting this up, you don't go to war with, with holes in the armor. You don't go to war with stuff. Like, I got to go to war knowing that I wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. I got to understand it's spiritual warfare. And this spirit that attached to Jezebel is after leaders. And it finds a kink in the armor of insecurity. It hits you when you're tired. It hits you when you burn out. And then it's gotcha. I don't care if you just got done calling fire down from heaven. If you saw a boy, this happened, by the way, in 1 Kings chapter um, uh, 18 and, and 17, that, 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 that Elijah just got provided for a year at this brook, and birds fed him. How awesome is that? Then he goes, and he prays over this woman's son, who was dead, raised him from the dead. I know your prayer life is cool. When was the last time that happened for you? Then he goes back after he told the king it's not going to rain, confronts the spirit that was on Jezebel, kills 450 prophets of Baal. I don't know how many people you've killed, but that's a lot. So you're going to be tired. (laughs) Could you imagine? You're like, all right, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, set one second. You had a drink. He was tired. But when did Jezebel hit him? I need you to know about Jezebel that she was the daughter of a king and, and, and a wicked king by that. And they worshiped Baal and they were immoral. And, and, and this spirit is a spirit of lust and a spirit of manipulation and a spirit of control. And I want you to see what happens when you go under and, and see this, that, that she was raised in a cult and they worshiped. And their worship involved sexual sin. Like it was the most, it was, she was known for her domineering, manipulative, and controlling spirit. When she became queen, her desire was to destroy and erase all evidence of Yahweh worship. I am that I am. 
them. God worship, Jesus worship, the, 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 the person that we come and celebrate today. But she was manipulative. She was intimidating. She was immoral, lustful, de- demoralizing, dominant, and unrepentant. And look at me, ladies, before you get mad. It can be on a guy, too. <laughs> This isn't a, all the guys are like, I knew you had a jazz bell spirit, girl. I've known this for years. <laughs> hey, wives, look at your husband and say, hey, uh, heifer, you can get it too. <laughs> it's not gender per- specific. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. That's why the Bible says the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear. The spirit is the Holy Spirit. Now, if you are a Christian, you cannot be possessed, but you can be oppressed. And you'll see what happens to my man Elijah as he's oppressed by the spirit of Jezebel. And in this time, I want you to see, here's the problem. Jezebel saw the fire fall down from heaven because Elijah said, hey, let's see who's God is really God. And you know the, you know the story and all that will preach. I'm telling you, it's so good as private and public and all that good stuff uh, but like but what ended up happening was was, was uh, Elijah's God won <laughs> and 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 Jezebel's didn't 450 prophets are now gone and instead of repenting she got more rebellious she got more angry and that's where I want to start I want you to see this she had a man and her sons killed because her husband cried like a little baby wanting his land and she steps in could care less about people as long as she gets positioned right. That's what this spirit does. And Jesus loved Jezebel. God loves Jezebel. Can't stand the spirit. So let's read the story. That's enough set up. <laughs> so verse number one, 1 Kings chapter 19. <laughs> what a way to start. You know what I'm talking about online? Goodness, it's so heavy in here. Could cut it. When Ahab got home, he told Jezebel everything Elijah had done. What a little pansy. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? This is what he did. You're just not going to believe it. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Including the way he killed all the prophets of Baal. So Jezebel sent this message to Elijah. May the God strike me and even kill me. If by this time tomorrow I have not killed you just as you killed them. Look at me. A threat isn't fatal, okay? A threat is not. It's just a threat. But let me teach just for a second. Elijah was afraid and fled for his life. He went to Beersheba, a town in Judah, and he left his servant there. So much to unpack here. Got a little bit of time and a lot. She said, you'll be dead in 24 hours. Listen, that's why it's so important to put on the full armor of God and whose voice you are listening to on a daily basis. Be sober, be vigilant because the adversary, your devil, he's seeking whom he may devour. He's not your friend. He's trying to destroy your family and you've got to stay on point. And here's what happens. This spirit begins to overwhelm you. It's a spirit of fear. Constantly worried that somebody's going to break into your house. Constantly worried that you're going to lose your job. Constantly worried that somebody is going to leave you. It's a spirit of fear. God did not give the spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. And when this spirit attacks you, I live constantly Googling things. I get I get a cough. I get indigestion. I'm looking it up. I've looked up over the past two years 38 different kinds of cancer, Google. In it. I'm looking at, because the spirit hit my heart. It hit my heart. Why did it hit my heart? Because my wife had cancer. My dad had cancer. My sister died of cancer. The spirit hits your heart in a vulnerable state and says, you're going to get cancer too. So you start Googling things. Start Googling. And, and you obsess about it. Obsess about it. You obsess about it. And I can't get it out of my head. Every ailment, everything leads back to I'm dying of this because it's just a threat. It's a threat. And if the devil can keep you worried about your health, then you're not going to be help to anybody else. And I say it like this. Until God calls you home, quit Googling it. Yeah. But the spirit hit his heart. Spirit of fear takes off running. He takes off running. She said, you're dead in 24 hours. And, and, and he knows. You ever got in a fight? Somebody, like, you ever been to school? And somebody, anybody ever got in a fight? Just raise your hand. Let me see what I'm working with. Go ahead and be honest. Dang. I know three life got all the hands up over there. Half of them, <laughs> half of them are in jail. But it, if it ever, 
if it ever goes down between three life and journey, we are good, preacher. We good. We good. God's got us, okay? But a bully can just threaten you. And all day you're like, I don't, I don't want to go outside. I don't want to go. He ain't even hurt you. He ain't even touched you yet. But just the threat locks you up. Just the threat of Satan. That's how he works. It gets in your mind. And that's how the spirit works. It gets in your mind. And now a man of God is running. And it's after every great victory, that's when the attack is even greater. It's after every victory that you're vulnerable. And it's in those moments that you have to suit up. And here's where you get, you start Googling things. Well, my spouse is going to leave me. This is going to happen. But the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Not as a man thinks, but as a man thinks in his heart. That's the deepest part of you. That's in your subconscious. That's what you truly believe is how you're going to behave. And that's where he went wrong. This is where I need you to understand. She said you're going to die in 24 hours, but God has a response too. He said, my mercy is brand new every 24 hours. So I know what the devil's saying is you're dead, but God's saying, I got new mercy for you tomorrow morning, child of God. You keep on running. Violet and her her friend, they live across the street, and when they leave each other, they always say, see you in the morning, see you in the morning, and so Reese will be over there, and Reese will be like, see you in the morning, and Violet will be like, see you in the morning, and this goes back and forth and back and forth, playing play ping pong today, finally get in the house, right, and that's exactly what God says to you, my mercy will see you in the morning, that's why it matters who you listen to, but he listened to the wrong voice, and what happened? It left him in a vicious place, running from God. And in running from God, I want you to see this, that this is a, this is a place where he begins to break down. And, and you'll, you'll get to a place where, where it, and it may take a year. And, and if you lose yourself for a year, it's okay. It's okay. Get back up. You hear me? Well, I lost myself for two years. Get back up. It's okay. Has anybody ever told you that? Get back up. It's not done. If you're still breathing, we've always said this, there's hope. But you'll listen to the voice of Jezebel or the voice of Jesus. And Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. But when you get into that dark place, it begins to muffle the voice of God out. The devil knows the word. He knows the scriptures. It's going to be more than just the scriptures and word. You're going to have to hear the voice of God and discern between the voice of God and the voice of Jezebel of the spirit that was on her. So I read these scriptures, and I want you to see this, that he says, that, that the scripture says this, that he went alone into the wilderness. And you know what the spirit does? It wants you isolated. It wants you alone, because then it, then, then, then it can attack you. It's, it's in those alone, all by yourself. Over the past two years, there was moments where my pride wouldn't allow me to just say, help! Like, I need help! I'm tired of waiting. I need help. But my ego got in the way. And now he's running. Listen, listen to what he says. He goes, he travels a day, sat down under a broom tree, prayed that he might die. He just called fire down from heaven. This spirit has come upon him, attacking him. I've had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors who have already died. Now, here's the only difference that I want you to see. Right now, he's depressed all by himself. But was he not all by himself in 1 Kings chapter 17, alone at the brook? You know the difference is? The difference is is this. God sent him to the brook. God never sent him to the desert. He went out of God's will and ended up in a depressed place. And every time you step outside of God's will, the safest place to be is in God's will. The safest place in the world to be. It doesn't mean that there's not going to be problems, that you're not going to be misunderstood, misrepresented and while you're alone at the brook, but you can rest assured, I'm called to this brook. And people may not understand this season of my life, but the difference over there and here is God's peace hits your heart here. And God looks at Elijah, looks at Elijah, says, what are you doing here? I never told you to come here. What are you doing, Elijah? I'm the only one. I'm the only one that's serving God. I'm the only one that wants to serve in kids. I'm the only one that shows up to this trunk or treat. I'm the only one. And he's having this major, major meltdown. But when you're tired, spiritually drained, physically, mentally spent, that's when this spirit 
attacks you. And what happens is you live in fear. Listen, church, listen. You live in fear. Live in it. Live in isolation. Live in suicidal thoughts, thinking you're, you may not, you may not want to kill yourself, but if it happened, you wouldn't care. That's where he's at. Just let me die. Thinking that you're the only one discouraged and depressed. What if my depression, my depressed state of mind was brought on by my own disobedience? Because I went into a place. Now there's depression, clinical depression, and you need to go get some uh, medical uh, help. That's that, uh, completely normal. I'm talking about a spiritual oppression that has hit the church, and it silences the voice that used to be so strong. The one that had faith, but it shuts the mouth. And then and, and what happened is he just listened to the wrong voice. And the voice of Jezebel keeps me isolated. But God made everything and he said it's good. The only thing that God said wasn't good was that man should not be what? Alone. That's why it's important that you don't just do church online if you can. That's why it's important that we gather in this room and encourage each other. It's hard to be vulnerable with a wall <laughs> because that wall ain't talking back. But when I got other worshipers in the room, I can be vulnerable. And victory happens through vulnerability. You'll see that here in just a second. But the voice of Jesus led him out of the cave. The voice of Jezebel pushed him in the cave. And then God sent some angels. He was so depressed and tired, laid down, went to sleep. God said, I got some food for you. And that's the best thing you can do sometimes, take a nap and eat, right? But here's the thing what God did. He sent some angels. And, a pa and over the past two years, in my place, in, in, in the dark places that, that, that I was in, God sent some angels just when I needed it. And then God says, hey, you need to eat up because the journey you're about to take, you're going to have to be fueled up. So he goes 40 days and 40 nights into the desert and ends up in a cave, y'all. And I want you to see this as I begin to fast forward this message is this. He ends up in a cave, and the Bible says this. It says, go outside. God just had enough. Say, go outside. I want you to stand on the mountain. I need to talk to you. And the Bible says this. It said, the Lord passed by. Somebody say, the Lord passed by. The Lord passed by, and there was a mighty windstorm that hit on the mountain. And, and, and it was such a terrible blast that the rocks were torn loose, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After that, there was a fire, but the Lord wasn't in the fire. And then you know the story if you grew up in Sunday school. It was in the whisper, gentle whisper. It, was in, it wasn't in everything that you could feel and see. It was in faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. That's why it's so important to come in here and get a Word. What you do with the Word is on you it's on you but when God gives you a word hold on to it come out of the cave that's why I got to get a word and when I get that word I got to grip tight to it knit together waiting on the Lord literally means to be knit together with him like a rope from here to heaven as it is in heaven so is it on earth because I'm knit together with the one I'm waiting on as I wait I'll worship do all those things but what happened in this story and as I see it is this God will use the wind he'll use the, the earthquake and he'll use the fire to get your attention now here's the deal he 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 allowed it but he wasn't in it. Can I say it like this? He'll use it, but he wasn't in it. He can use your spouse leaving you. Was he really in that, though? He can use the divorce, but that wasn't his perfect will. He can use the, the dark places, but what the devil meant for evil, God meant for good. And that's what he's doing. He used these circumstances to wake Elijah up. But it wasn't in what he saw. It was what he heard. And we know that then Jesus calls him out of the cave. So gracious was God. After he said, after he said, I just want to die. Jesus said, you just need to eat. You see how good God is? I mean, I've been there, you know, like you ever been so hungry that you're like, I'm going to die. And God's like, girl, you just need a pop tart. You know? Sometimes I'm, I'm a Pop-Tart away from my praise coming back. I'm a Chick-fil-A sandwich away from just crying in the spirit, okay? I'll be speaking in tongues after I ate myself a hot dog. You know what I mean? But when the storm comes and life shakes you, when the heat gets turned up, that's where God got me. 
He allowed the storm to come into my life. He allowed the heat to turn up. He allowed things that only Joshua needed to melt this heart of stone and press me down and crush me into a place to come out of the cave. And as I begin to just wrap this, uh, the, this up, I, I want you to see when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face and the voice said, what are you doing here, Elijah? Then he says it again. I've zealously served you. I'm the only one. And, and God's over there like, is this over with you? And, but this spirit will have you repeating the same thing. Conversations from deja vu. I, have you ever said this? If, if, if I'm, I'm not do, dealing with the same thing next year, only for next year to deal with the same thing. You're in a spirit of attack. There's spiritual warfare going on in your home. I'm going to teach you how to break out of it. But here's the idea. It's this repetitive, same old, same old. Revival can't hit the house. Why? Because I've not repented from the things that I keep running to versus running to God. I'm running to that comfortable thing because I just don't want to let it go. But God calls him out of this cave. He heard him say all that. He said, look at me. Go back the same way you came. You went 40 days in. You're going what? 40 days out, and I want you to walk past all the things that you walk to on your road to depression because you're going to walk back by it in a road of deliverance. I'm setting you out of this cave. I'm calling you out of your comfort. I'm calling you out of complacency. I'm calling you out of this depressed state of mind, and I'm calling you in, and you know what God did to get him out of the cave? He put a calling on his life, and you'll never come out of the cave until that calling is placed on your life. He said, I want you to anoint Hazel as king. I want you to anoint Jehu as king. And then I want you to anoint Elisha as your protege, as your predecessor. He's going to do twice as much as you. You'll see it later on. But he put a calling for this young man to come out of the cave. And he puts a calling on the men of Journey Church to come out of the cave. Be courageous enough to walk away from the bottle. Be courageous enough to walk away from that bitterness and that hatred. Be brave enough to set the boundaries where he can call you to sow into the next generation. And I want you to see what ended up happening as he calls him out of the cave. He came out with a new calling. Anoint three men, Hazel, Jehu, and Elisha. And he had fought this thing by himself. But he realized God showed up. Y'all want to know how this thing ended? This is crazy. We got a couple of minutes left. This is crazy. Jehu, you remember he anointed him? He had a different spirit, different generation, had a different spirit. He had a spirit of God on him. Woo! He had a mighty spirit. And in 2 Kings chapter 9, this makes me want to get a little attitude. 2 <laughs> Kings chapter 9, God says, I need you to go do some work. He said, bet, where are we going? He said, oh, you're going to Jezebel's house. He said, bet, I'm on the way. Gets on a horse, heads to Jezebel's crib. And Jezebel is up there. In the window, looking down at Jehu. And this is how rebellious her spirit was to the day she died. She looked at him and said, did you come in peace, you murderer? You see how she talks to people? See how she degrades people? Did you come in peace, you murderer? And this is what the scripture says. I love it. This is so good. When Jehu told you he was equipped by the spirit of God. Spirit, spirit of Jezebel, you'll stay in fear, you'll stay in your cave, you'll stay drunk, high, numbed out on whatever it is, trying to make money, trying to go to this position, that position, like, like trying to sleep with this person and that person. You'll, you'll continue in all of that destruction. But when the Spirit of God hits you, whew, when Jehu entered the gate of the palace, she shouted at him, you come in peace, you murderer. <laughs> and then Jehu said, he looked up and saw her at the window, shouted, who's on my side? What he was saying is, who's on the Lord's side? Oh, there's so many great preachers. If you want to go listen to some sermons, Robert Morris, um, Jensen Franklin. I just read a book, Out of the Cave, by Chris Hodges. So good. You want to read all those? You can hear about this way more. I don't have time to go into all of it, all right? But they're good. So much better than me. But I want you to see. Here's the idea. He said, hey, he said, who's on the Lord's side? And three eunuchs. Which were, which were three men that had been castrated because the king was so insecure. He didn't want somebody to be able to sleep with his wife, if I'm just being honest with you. So he wanted to surround it with people that couldn't do anything. But they were emasculated men. They were unproductive. And the spirit of Jezebel will create an unproductive spirit in your life. You can pray all day long, but until this spirit is gone, the, the, 
the unproductive spirit, un- incapable, I guess, of even having revival. But he looks at these emasculated men, and he said, who's on the Lord's side? And the spirit came upon them. They said, us. And they grabbed her and threw her out the window. Isn't that the coolest thing ever as the band comes up here and plays? It's been a great day. Amen. That was the sermon. Wouldn't that be awesome? Wouldn't that be great? Threw her out the window. And she splattered on the ground. And it went up against the walls. And Jehu is on his horse. And he tramples over her on his horse. He tramples the blood of Jezebel in that moment. And I got so fired up because what I begin to see is with God, you can trample the spirit of depression, anxiety, discouragement, fear, anger underneath your feet. Why is that? Romans chapter 16. I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this, Romans 16. Oh, this is so good. He said, I could crush him underneath my feet. Crush Satan underneath my feet. Why? Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You see, these men got their spiritual fight back. They stood up for what was right. And you'll never be blessed out of the order of God. Here's the order. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be added. If you're seeking first pleasure, if you're seeking first your kingdom, it'll never work. It's out of order. But the order of God is submit to God. Come back in alignment with God. Journey Church, as you fast, come back in alignment with God. God aligned with your kingdom, and that's it. Not my will, your will be done. Secondly, resist the devil means to stand. It means to fight. It means to not be passive. It means that if somebody was so was going to show up at your house and rob your house at three o'clock this morning, that you're not just going to be like, "Come in." The safe's in the closet. They're going to come into a gun. (laughs) They're going to come into a fight, and the church has to get back in that mode. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. But look at me against principalities and powers. So how? How do I fight this? So glad they made a decision that day to throw it out the window. They made a decision that day to toss it out the window, trample it underneath my feet. Weapons of our warfare are, are, are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down every argument, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. You don't have to believe every thought that you have. It has to be taken captive. Now, you got to believe every thought and every truth that God puts inside of your life, that you are more than a conqueror, that you are forgiven, that you are a saint, that God sees you. He sees your soul. So how do I fight this? Watch this. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of His might, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers, and against the rulers of the darkness of this age. Then he says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Having done all to stand. To say, if nobody else will stand, I'll stand in my home. Right in the middle of the argument, men, instead of arguing back, get down on your knees and begin to pray to God. That's how you stand. When you don't know how to fight, you don't know what else to do, lay down before God and begin to pray over your home. Walk into every room and break the agreement with this Jezebel spirit. Fast and pray. Humble yourself and say, I can't break this. But I'll pray over this house until I see God heal it. Until I see revival hit the rye house. It doesn't really matter. I want revival to hit my home. I'm after God. I am not running in a, I don't want to run anymore. I tried that and it's miserable. And God's calling us out of the cave, men. And he's calling you to be courageous. 
And he's calling you to step up to the plate and be the pastor of the home, the priest of the home, to be kind. Not look at woman, follow me. No, if you're following God, she has no problem following you. I've never met a wife that had a problem following a humble, caring, loving husband. It's getting back to warring in the spirit to know why has this been happening. I'm up at 3 and 4 and 5 in the morning. My sleep is gone. I'm discouraged and depressed. Wake up, child of God. Begin to cry out to Abba, Father who loves you and cares about you and will come into your situation. But how do I fight? Spirit of Jezebel wants to keep you quiet, but it takes courage to speak up. Speak up. You can't control their response, but you can control yours. And look at me. If you've been in that cave, you don't have to go on an apology tour. If the Holy Spirit tells you to apologize, then apologize. But you ain't going to come call up every Tom, Dick, and Harry and, and, and apologize to them. This is how you apologize. Do the next right thing. One month. Do the next right thing. One month. One day at a time. Yeah, but this thing's controlled me. Well, rebuke it and get some accountability in your life. But say, God, help me. How did Jericho's walls fall? How did they fall? Because somebody gave a cute sermon? Because we worshiped long enough? No, they were obedient and had faith in God. And they did it God's way. If you continue doing it your way, it'll never break. The curse will never break. But those strongholds will snap in half when I'm just obedient to God. The walls of rebellion, the walls of bitterness, the walls of anger, the walls of numbness, the walls of I don't care begin to fall when I'm just obedient to the call of God. And in this church, I challenge you as we close out, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pray over you. The Bible says, wait patiently for the Lord, be brave and courageous. In just a minute, I'm going to pray over you, okay? And I'm asking you to be courageous enough to come out of the cave. I'm asking you right now to be courageous enough to trust God with your, with, with your spouse and your kids. It may not look good right now. That's okay. And I'm asking you to trust God that, that, that no matter what the outcome is, that you'll be obedient. If the person that you love the most walks away from you, that you'll still be obedient. And you'll still be okay. It may not feel good and it's going to hurt like hell, but you'll still be okay. Why? Because he gave me a spirit of Elijah, not a spirit of Jezebel. He turned that spirit around. And when God begins to do that for you, I promise you this, you'll begin to see revival hit your house. If I stay with Jezebel, I stay jealous. I stay running to alcohol. I stay running to buying stuff. I stay running. And I stay in these camps of places that God doesn't want me to be. But when I break agreement with the spirit, that's when I begin to break out. Simple illustration. We got three minutes. It says I'm over seven. You know what I mean? You know, that doesn't feel good. Stupid clock. But you know the animal kingdom can sense a storm before your weather app can? Did y'all know that? Craziest thing in the world. Like a built-in weather app in their head. They feel the pressures change. And my, my dentist told me that kids don't know the difference between pressure and pain. And sometimes I don't think the church knows the difference between pressure and pain. They said the pressure feels like pain, but pressure is just pressure. But when the pain gets great enough, people change. As I was listening to this story, cows sense a storm, and, and cows would be like, oh, no, there's a storm. Let's go. Let's run from it, right? Or, or let's walk really slowly from it. And so they all go walking from it. And they end up staying in the storm longer because, of, because they're trying to run from the storm. But then there's a buffalo. And I heard about this. I was like, what? That is so good. And I wish I could play that like you. But a buffalo senses the same storm at the same time. And the buffalo looks at the other buffalo and says, y'all know what to do? And they're like, bet. Heck yeah. Hoof me. And they hoof each other. And a storm is coming at them. 
And when the cows are running from it, the buffalo turn towards the storm, and they run right at the storm. They don't run from it. And they end up getting through the storm faster than the cow does. Why? Because they don't run from the hard conversation. They run to it. They don't run from restoration. They run to it. They don't run from seeing God fix the marriage. They run to it. And you'll continue to run from that thing that scares you. Or you'll face it and be brave enough. You'll be courageous enough to say, not today, Satan. Empowered with the Spirit of God, I'm tossing this spirit out the window and I'll be able to trample it underneath my feet in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And this is how we close. They're going to sing this song with every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're in this room and you've been battling with a season of depression, of spiritual attack, you've been afraid, and, 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 and as, you, as you hear this, you're like, man, that's me. I've been going through this. And you've been in a cave of your own. You've been in a cave not really doing what God has called you to do. Just in a cave all by yourself. God is calling the church out of the cave. And he's calling us to be courageous in these last days. That if who will stand? Joshua said, as for me and my house, oh, we're going to serve the Lord. Everybody else can run. But there's a Jehu in this room that says, not today. I'm going after everything that God's got for me. And God wants to give some men in this room a spirit of revival, a spirit of Elijah, a spirit to stand up and trust God when you don't feel it. And if that's you in this place with nobody looking around, even online, nobody looking around, you say, I've been manipulated by the Spirit, I've been intimidated, I've been living in fear, anxiety, constant worry, I've got GERDs, I, I, constant headaches, I can't get rid of it, I don't know what else to do. Break agreement right now with it. In just a second, I'm going to give you an opportunity to stand up in the Spirit, walk out of that cave, but you're going to have to humble yourself. You're going to have to humble yourself and say, I've been in a really dark place. And the best way to come out of a really dark place is to bring it into the light. And we begin to pray, submit to God, resist the devil, he'll flee, draw near to God, and repent of even allowing this spirit into your life. Repent of saying, God, I don't want to run towards it. I want to run towards you. Repent and run to the altar. Repent and run towards revival. Repent and fast and pray and repent until you see the chains broke off of yourself, off of your sons and your daughters and your home where you see God step in and set you free to do the things that he's called you to do. But how many of you would say, I've been battling this and I feel like I've been all by myself. Just raise your hand. Put your hand up. Put your hand up. 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 Come on. Spirit of boldness. Spirit of boldness in this room. If that's you, now I want you to stand up. I want you to stand up and you say, I'm breaking the ties. I'm breaking the chains of this spirit. Now I want you to come down to this altar and I want to begin to pray for you. Come down to this altar. I'm asking for all of my prayer warriors to begin to come down here and pray over and say, God, we rebuke the spirit of Jezebel. God, we break ties with the spirit of Jezebel. God, I pray, Lord, that your spirit, your Holy Spirit, would begin to stir inside of our lives for obedience, for confidence, for stepping into a new calling. God, we come out of the cave of destruction, the cave of depression, the cave of discouragement, and we step into a brand new calling today. And it's in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Before they sing this song, I want you to all stand up on your feet if you can. If you're in your living room, stand up on your feet. Put your hands to the air and say, God, I seek first the kingdom today. God, I get back into holy alliance and back into order with you. God, I repent of running from the calling that you placed on my life. God, I don't want to run from you. I want to run to you. So in Jesus' name, God, I rebuke the spirit of Jezebel out of this room, God. I pray, Lord, that you would give a spirit of confidence, a spirit, God, 
of courageous bravery to your children, God. I pray, Lord, that you call them out of the cave. I pray that you place a calling on their life that only you can do. I pray that online some people would be set free from depression, from discouragement. God, that we would wait on you and worship our way into a whole nother level of thinking. Jesus, break it. Jesus, break it. Jesus, break it. And it's in your name. The church said amen and amen and amen. Just begin to worship the King. Worship God. Say, Lord, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your patience. 